So um, um, sometimes I get comments like about that. So I wanted to make that clear, first of all. Uh, um, okay, the next step as far as uh, uh, the um, views of what historical revisionism means or to revise or review history. Uh, you know, it's, I wrote, the, uh, there's a stanza in the, in the text about this too. I think in every period of the present, we have like favorite um, parts of the past and there's some sort of, they like relate to one another. Um, mm, for example, not having lived in the 1920s, I think my I look at the 1920s like the 1960s. You know, see this twist dance like the Charleston dance. You know, and the people were going wild. You know, um, so you know you can make these kinds of declinations. So. Um, it, it happens that um, from a certain point in the present, you want to restore certain parts of the past that, you've, that somehow the epic has an, um, an affinity with. And this is what I see is constantly going on in this historical museum. So that's why I wanted to have the book. See, the theme of the book is about that. It happens to be in Versailles because it's a great place. It's an apt place to show that. Uh, okay, what? Uh, uh, I wanted to. S okay, I lost my thread here. Now it's time to take a question. Okay, no, I'm not done yet. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, well, I'll tell you how, I'll answer that question. Well, um, okay, I have two answers to, to that. On the philosophical level, um, I was always interested in the shooting of interiors as being evocative of internal soul state. Um, I first came to this notion, I read a book in the early 70s by Francis Yates called The Art of Memory, and, um, and it just talks about ancient mnemonic systems and how the students used to have to memorize empty rooms, etc. And um, so that's how I first got involved in photography, actually, because in, prior to that I was like, involved in avant-garde filmmaking and you know rooms just look bad in film they you know whether it's video or film they like vibrate and stuff they don't have that dead stillness that uh, a still has so they just look more better for me in photography plus it's cheaper conveniently cheaper uh, and then um, I, you know, I read things about Jung and how, you know, the, his notion of the superego. They talk a lot about Jung now because of his new book that I haven't, his new forgotten book that I haven't seen yet. But, um, and his notion of the superego, how people exteriorize, how they want to be seen. And you can see that in the clothes they wear, the stuff they put on the walls, etc., etc. So, um... And I realized that in museums, this happens, but on a collective, on a social collective level, or you can call it the collective superego. So um, um, that's how I got in, why I thought um, that was an interesting concept to photograph. Okay. Uh, uh, let's take a yeah. yeah. There is a quotation from a Bob Dylan song at yeah. the beginning of your book. Can you explain why you put it there? Well, I think that's an obvious. It's just, um, what is it? Inside the museum, infinity goes up on trial. Voices echo. This is what uh, salvation should be, is like after a while. 
well, okay, uh, inside the museum, infinity goes up on trial. I mean, infinity in history is sort of the same. It's like Saturn's view, like, you know, um, time is infinite. Saturn is uh, time's witness. So there's some, some witnessing thing about... Uh, um, uh, uh, voices echo. You know, voices echo. Um, oh, and up on trial. Yes, up on trial is in sort of empirical method. It's like um, judgment. Um, I mean, like Saturn is like the the Lord of Karma stuff. Okay, so he's the judge. Um, um, okay, salvation, you can look at it in the um, spiritual way or just from saving. It's what you save, okay, on, not even on a spiritual level. On the, um, it's uh, time tells, uh, judges what you will save, what you need to save. Sometimes you threw stuff away and you said, oh, I shouldn't have threw that, I needed that, or that was important. Um, uh, um, uh, does that answer it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just thought it was an apt quote because it's it's about time and time's witnesses, and it's about what museology, in fact, is about. It was an apt. Uh, I'm a big Bob fan, so I thought it was great to, to start with that. And the other thing I want to say, also, the other reason I put it in the book, is um, even though. The, the the subject of these photos, it's like French stuff, and they're but the pictures are in fact American pictures. So, uh, and what do I mean by that? Um, I find like most Americans who look at this book, they don't really know what they're looking at as far as the identity of each room, these people, you know. Uh, but they they feel some sort of of um, psychological thing going on. Where I show it to French people, they know much more about what each icon is really about and what the subject matter is. But they're sort of disturbed by it more. So in this book is about. Uh, you know, because I, I grew up first speaking French and speaking English, so what this book, why it's sort of personally, psychologically important to me is I made a book about what French and Americans mutually don't get about each other. <laughs> it's, my, it's my gift and fuck you to them. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay, let's take another question. There's no questions. Okay, I have to think about this stuff to talk about. Um, okay, so let's go about the three volumes there. Okay, like the transitional states. Oh, yeah, there was another part of your question, how I first started to shoot there. Actually, when I first went there, I think it was in 1983, and I walked into L'Orangerie, which is a space where they keep all the trees. And I, I couldn't believe that such a cathedral kind of space simply for like uh, storing of trees, of tropical, so-called tropical trees um, in the winter. And there's no uh, heating or air conditioning in that space, but I think between uh, summer and winter, there's no more than three degrees centigrade temperature variance because the walls are about, I believe, four meters thick. Um, and I just thought that was just the most amazing space with all those trees inside. And then I started to seeing there was all these construction kinds of trucks. And I said, well, there's something going on here. And then I had peeked into a window and I saw, so I said, hmm. And so I started to shoot there in 1983. It wasn't until, until 1985 that I had a sort of a idea of what it was that was going on there, that it was, in fact, historical revisionism. It took me two years to figure that out. But I did get it. Um, okay, so the, the first volume I always named the Transitional States because... Oh yeah, why there's no people in this book? Though I will make one volume just full of tourists. That'll maybe be volume five, okay? And I just shoot all the tourists. 
because when you see them there, they really don't.